This is more than a bundle. It's more than a combo deal. It's not just stuff. This is your home, your car. And you want to give them the protection they deserve. With home and auto insurance. State Farm agents get it. It's why they're here. In Erie, talk to State Farm agent Jeannie Hulse. This is more than a bundle. It's more than a combo deal. It's not just stuff. This is your home, your car. And you want to give them the protection they deserve. With home and auto insurance. State Farm agents get it. It's why they're here. Next up is number 10, Jaden George. Jaden is being escorted by his parents, Jeff George and Ricky George. Jaden plans to become a forensic scientist. And his favorite moment of high school was starting in his first varsity football game. Next up, is number 11, Justin Jones. Justin's being escorted by Natasha Peters and Jay Nelms. His future plans are to go into the Army, and his favorite high school experience or moment was summer football camp. Our next senior is number 12, Connor Quinn. Connor's being escorted by Jeremy Quinn and Jessica Quinn. His future plans are to attend college. He's currently undecided. His favorite high school memory was grade day concert with his boys. Next up is number 13, Benji Havner. Benji's here with mom, Shannon Havner. Benji plans to play college baseball. And his favorite high school memory was going all the way to state championship his freshman year. Next up is number 18, Braden Rao. Braden is being escorted by Michael Rao, Gina Trujillo, Jackie Rao, and Justin, sorry, Jason Trujillo. Braden's future plans are to play college football, and his favorite high school experience is Friday night football. Next up is number 22, Jake Farling. Jake's being escorted by his parents, Scott and Beth Farling. Jake plans to go to college and study accounting. His favorite memory from high school was moving through life with the boys.
Next up is number 25, Jacob Flood. Jacob is being escorted by Matt and Kristen Flood. In the future, Jacob plans to attend college and study environmental sciences. His favorite high school memory was making memories with friends. Next up is number 38, Mason Hill. Mason is being escorted by parents Susan and Brandon Hill. In the future, Mason plans to go to college and start making money. And his favorite high school experience was hanging out with the boys. All right, they are finishing up the senior festivities here in the stadium. Welcome in, everybody. We let you have a little taste of a senior night here on the Erie Tiger Network. We have been waiting for months to finally say these words, welcome in to high school football. And we are so excited to bring it to you here tonight as the Erie Tigers uh, play their first ever game in 4A as they take on the Greeley West Spartans. Pretty interesting matchup here between these two teams. We'll get into that and more, and there's one really unique tidbit uh, that we will talk about uh, as we go in. But we will roll on with our broadcast shows. We are broadcasting live from the Gen Realty broadcast booth here at Tiger Stadium. We'll take a quick time out. When we come back, we'll have our pregame show here on the Erie Tiger Network. Front Range Landfill puts all your needs in front of everything else. Front Range Landfill won Erie Chamber of Commerce Business of the Year Award as well as being featured on national television. We are very proud of our facility and we welcome the opportunity to address your disposal needs. Our focus is on customer service. We strive to achieve easy and rapid access in and out of the facility. We feel certain that we will exceed your expectations of your solid waste disposal requirements. Choose Front Range Landfill for all your landfill needs. You will be pleased. Are you looking to buy or sell a new home? Jen McGurk, an experienced real estate agent serving Erie, Vista Ridge, and the surrounding Denver area. For years, Jen has assisted all types of buyers and sellers with their real estate needs. Give Jen a call today at 303-949-3331 or check out Jen Realty online at jenrealty.com. If you ever wanted to support the Erie Tiger Network, the student VR arm of Erie High School, well now you can. We have set up a Patreon page. There's a way for you to send us a monthly pledge in order to provide funding for the program as well get access to reward tiers. As a Tiger fan, you get the satisfaction of knowing you are helping out your favorite local media organization. As a member of the ETN fan club, you are officially recognized on air and can receive ETN goodies throughout the year. As an in-broadcast red sponsor, you get to sponsor a specific segment of any broadcast. For more information, email bird underscore brandon at sbbsd.org. This is a $25 per month commitment. As an appreciator of Erie's live broadcast with the weekly news, you can help support this program by becoming one of our patrons by going to bit.ly slash ETN Patreon. Welcome back in as we are finishing up the pregame festivities here, uh, at least in the stadium. Brandon Bird here with you as we bring you the first broadcast of the year for football in a very lightly, sparsely packed stadium. In fact, packed is not the word I would use. A sparsely spread out, I don't even, hardly populated stadium. 
Uh, only 175 fans allowed in through the gate on the side of the bleachers, and they have been checking, and only uh, seniors have been getting the passes, four of them, I believe, and only one for the rest of the players. So we know a lot of you are joining us tonight, and we're happy that um, we could be a part of this experience for you regardless of the circumstances. Well, a lot of changes here this year. Uh, if you take a look at some of the COVID rules that are going on, uh, participants, coaches, managers, and other personnel uh, obviously need to stay home if they're sick. That's kind of a given. Team box on the sideline is extended to the 10-yard line on each side. That is brand new, obviously, for just COVID. Typically, that extends from about the 25 to the 25. So they've added length on both ends. There's no benches on the sidelines either. They have extended just single folding chairs all the way down from 10 yard line to 10 yard line. Uh, there's no locker room use. So neither of these teams will be using locker room facilities before or after the game or during halftime. So kind of like your old school Little League football, grab some uh, orange slices on the sidelines, maybe a Capri Sun or something, and uh, that's what halftime is, a little huddle on the sideline or in the end zone. Uh, maximum of four student assistants on the sidelines. No pregame coin toss, and uh, we'll look at that. And uh, no in weekend in-person film review. In fact, the coin toss rule, that was new to this year. You see the tweet from Ryan Casey of Chassa. Um, it is home for heads, tails. They do that for the entire state. The coin landed on heads, so Erie won the toss this week. So it's their choice what they want to do here this week. Uh, so those are kind of the COVID rules, the new things that are going on. Um, let's talk a little bit about... Well, let's give you an opportunity. Hey, folks, there is a QR code. You can pull out your phone or a different device if you're sitting at home watching this on the big screen, or uh, maybe you can screenshot this, use this as a different device. That is for the rosters if you want to follow along. Yeah, that's right, Your Tiger Network giving you access to the rosters for both teams tonight here on the broadcast. So uh, we'll leave that up here for another couple seconds. Uh, we'll kind of go over some of the key players here in a little bit. This game, of course, is brought to you by Gen Realty. Gen Realty uh, is the sponsor, the title sponsor of this, a very generous donation. You're going to see a little few special things here tonight. In a couple weeks, we are ordering new broadcast equipment thanks to a special donation from Gen Realty, which will have multi-camera, slow motion, instant replay, synced graphics with the scoreboard, all the bells and whistles you would want in a broadcast, and that'll make our broadcast at home look real, real nice. You can also follow us on social media at Erie Tiger Media. So you can find us on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. We are in a new conference this year. This is a special aligned conference because of what was going to happen. Now, the Northern Colorado Athletic Association, it's actually been changed. It was going to be called the NCAA. That's now been changed to the NCAC, I believe, or something along those lines for obvious reasons. But with the COVID shuffles, they kind of realigned uh, divisions and leagues and stuff because some schools are opting to play this fall. Some schools will play football in the spring, actually. But that's kind of a look, and there has already been a handful of teams within this league that has played Greeley Central off to an 0-1 start, Heritage off to an 0-1 start, Loveland, they are 1-0, and and Windsor 1-0. Uh, but that's a, t a look at kind of who is in the league. Of course, Erie will see Silver Creek next week. And this is the first year that Erie is in 4A, so they move up. And how interesting is it? You move to 4A, and your first start for a quarterback is a freshman, Blake Barnett. And that is the story tonight. In fact, both teams will be starting freshman quarterbacks. It's Jonathan Weirich for Greeley West. It is Blake Barnett for Erie. And the interesting thing is both had senior sisters last year, and at both schools, those sisters were named the 2019-2020 Athlete of the Year as both sisters starred in two sports. So it must be in the genes. A shout-out to Alyssa Barnett, a former Erie Tiger Media student. She was a yearbook student and was the Athlete of the Year last year. So Blake, a freshman, gets the start here tonight. I tell you what, I've thought about 
Erie football over the years, there have not been too many freshmen that have seen the field out here in a Tiger uniform. I remember Noah Roper getting significant playing time, but even Noah was not a regular starter except as your punt returner. So big, big task tonight for the freshman Blake Barnett. Let's celebrate the seniors a little bit here, and then we'll take a timeout. We'll come back, have a little bit more pregame action for you. But it's senior night here on the Erie Tiger Network. Hey, my name is Braden Rout. I'm number 18, and I'm the starting wide receiver for your football. My name is Jaden George. I'm number 10. I play punter and corner. Uh, Mason Hill, 38, and middle linebacker. Hello, I'm Forrest Wilson. My number is 46, and I am a middle linebacker. Brendan Murphy, senior, wide receiver, cornerback, kicker. My name is Justin Jones. I'm number 11, and I play cornerback. What's up? My name is Jake Farling. I'm number 22. I'm a linebacker. Uh, Adam Bristow, number nine, and cornerback. Connor Quinn, number 12, outside linebacker. My name is Mason Vivi. I'm number seven, and I'm a running back in strong safety for Erie High School. Hey, my name is Andrew Piper, and I play free safety. And Hi, I'm Benji Havner. I'm number 13. I play wide receiver and corner. I'm Jacob Flood. I'm number 25, and I play middle linebacker. My name's Jasper Hansen. Um, my number is 53. I play left guard and nose guard. My name is Will Johns. I'm number six, and I'm a slot receiver and safety. Uh, I'm Eric Stanek. I'm 58, and I play DN. Gus Fonseca Walker, number three, uh, slot receiver and cornerback. My name is Drake Rhodes. I'm number 65, the senior starting offensive tackle for Erie High School. In Erie, talk to State Farm agent Jeannie Hulse. Do you have a plan in place for your family's future in the event something happens to you? Are you caring for aging parents, grandparents, or a loved one with special needs? The Germany Law Firm, named 2017 Erie's Chamber Business of the Year, provides expert legal guidance and peace of mind for you and your family in the areas of probate, elder law, and estate planning. Visit Germany Law Firm's Erie Village office or website at coelderlaw.net set up a personalized consultation. Have you ever wanted to support the Erie Tiger Network, the student VR arm of Erie High School? Well, now you can. We have set up a Patreon page. There's a way for you to send us a monthly pledge in order to provide funding for the program as we get access to reward tiers. As a Tiger fan, you get the satisfaction of knowing you are helping out your favorite local media organization. As a member of the ETN fan club, you are officially recognized on air and can receive ETN goodies throughout the year. As an in-broadcast red sponsor, you get to sponsor a specific segment of any broadcast. For more information, email bird underscore brandon at svbsd.org. This is a $25 per month commitment. As an appreciator of Erie's live broadcast with the weekly news, you can help support this program by becoming one of our patrons by going to bit.ly slash ETN Patreon. Go to where your friends are. 
go to where the action's at. Go find your sense of adventure. Go Airheads. Airsoft Field and Store located in Erie, Colorado. Go Airheads and Go Tigers. And welcome back into the Erie Tiger Network. We are moments away from getting this thing started as the Tigers are about ready to come out of the thunder shoot. Brandon Bird here with you broadcasting live from the Gen Realty broadcast booth. And, uh, man, we are so excited. We, I know we've said that about a dozen times, but uh, it's always exciting to bring high school football back to you. Let's go over the offensive starters for the Tigers. We don't have a full graphic <laughs> built out because uh, we didn't have enough time, but uh, starting quarterback tonight, we kind of already mentioned it, Blake Barnett, a freshman here for the Tigers. The starting running back is Mason Vivi. He's a senior. The starting H-back, kind of in that H-back, tight end, fullback mode will be Andrew Piper. So the Tigers trying to find a way to get him on this field at the same time as Mason Vivi. Your starting wideouts will be Braden Rao, Gus Fonseca Walker in the slot, and Gage Nichols along the outside. The starting offensive line tonight for the Tigers will be Jake Rhodes, John Pastore, Jackson Clancy, Ryan McConnell, and Cy Pinto. And that is uh, what you can expect from tonight's starters. And... Uh, that's for the Erie Tigers, of course. By the way, Greeley West fans, there's something we would love your help with. We already see some of you in the chat here on this. Uh, we want to know how to say properly. So if you could phonetically spell it for us in the chat, Jonathan Weirick. Weirick. So we just want to make sure that we have uh, correct pronunciation because we'll be saying his name a lot tonight because he is the starting quarterback here tonight and we are just moments here from getting this one started as i mentioned erie already won the coin toss because they're the home team and chassa flipped for everyone in the state here tonight so that is that so i'm not sure if they are receiving and already the coach is telling all the players to spread out on the sideline and I have a feeling that's going to be a theme as the kids like to bunch up. And, uh, well, they're used to getting told this at school now as hybrid learning started this week. So we had our first students in the building this year. By the way, it's Wyrick. So thank you, Felix Lozano. Wyrick, thank you very much for participating in the chat and letting us know. And it will be Greeley West to receive. So I imagine that Erie has chosen to... 
defer to the second half. And we'll get our rosters fired up here as I'm sitting back down. By the way, a full ETN crew here for you. It's uh, Madison Gambon that is our producer and director here tonight. Uh, so she has a lot on her plate. So a special thanks for her. She's kind of running all the graphics and commercials and all that good stuff. The kick is all the way back to the one-yard line fielded. Tigers chasing. It's Jarmio that will run it out past the 20 to the 21. And that is where Wyrick and company will get things started for the Spartans. Greeley West will come out here in uh, Greeley West. Yeah, look at last year, three and seven, but this has been a program that has had some success. They made the playoffs not too long ago. And so uh, uh, when we talked to Coach Chad Cooper earlier today, he mentioned that Greeley West, they return a lot of players from last year's team in the trenches. So they expect a good dog fight, and they know right away they want to stop the run, do the Tigers. So why, Rick? We'll hand it off up the middle, and that's Jaramillo. And he will pick up about four yards on the first carry of the game. And it is weird. It is You can hear the fans almost individually talking. It's um, far from a football game. The cheerleaders are also here. That was one thing that Chassa allowed. As everyone adorning masks. Another handoff. This is kind of a little end around on the right side, a little shimmy shake, and he's stacked up right near the line to gain. I think that was Jeremiah Martinez, and they will say he is does have enough for a first down. So a six-yard pickup there for Jeremiah Martinez, and already a first down here for the Spartans to start this one. First and 10 now. Ball spotted at the far hash and at the 31-yard line. Double tight, double wing formation here. Little handoff up the middle, fullback, and he is stacked up at the line of scrimmage. That is Ben Colgate on the carry. And not quite sure who had the tackle there. We mentioned... Uh, someone in the chat asked about the roster. We'll, we'll throw up that graphic here again in a little bit. So, uh, But we don't have a, a copy of the link uh, to post for you, at least right now. Little reverse inside misdirection. Given a fumble. It's popped out, and the Tigers jump on it at midfield. So already a fumble, and that's going to be... Jeremiah Martinez, he had a decent gain going. He picked up about seven yards, and then Martinez coughed it up. And so the first turnover of the year goes in favor of the Tigers, and they'll take over first and ten inside Spartan territory. And if we take another look at that, you can see that he just kind of lost it. Vivi came up for the tackle there, and it just popped free. So first and 10 now for the Tigers, and here we go. Blake Barnett, the diaper dandy, will start things in the shotgun. He's flanked to his left with Vivi. That's Piper in motion across the formation. Little play action. Barnett's going to stop, fires, completes his first career pass out in the flat to Piper, and a good gain there on first down and a pickup of 16 yards. And how about that? Your first career start as a freshman, and you are already one for one for 16 yards. That's, uh, I like that play call by Coach Toof. You get a rollout, an easy completion, settle down your freshman quarterback. Good play call there for Coach Toof. Now first and 10, fresh set of downs. Ball spotted on the near hash. Barnett takes the snap. He's going to run read option. He'll keep it himself up the middle. There's the freshman. Bounces it to the outside. And Blake Barnett begins his career with some fireworks. Oh, my goodness. Blake Barnett, 34 yards to the house. And he has the first touchdown of the season for the Erie Tigers and the first touchdown of his career. And you can see why the staff was so excited about him. 
They said, you know what? He's going to make some mistakes. He's a freshman, but this kid is a freak. That was Dries Colasso that told me that one. And so a touchdown for the Tigers. And already they're on top six to nothing. And the kick is up. And it is good. And so the Tigers take the lead. That was Jaden George on the extra point. But a 34-yard touchdown scamper by Blake Barnett puts the Tigers on top here in the first quarter with 9.34 remaining. A two-play drive, a 16-yard pass to Andrew Piper and a 34-yard run. And we appear to have a couple scoreboard issues. We're trying to get our graphic going here. And so just be patient with us as, uh, you know, there's always a couple kinks to work out here in the early part of the season. And right now it seems to be the clock that's giving us a little bit of time. As we said, we have a new system coming here in the Gen Realty broadcast booth. So uh, that will happen. So 9.34. Remaining here is we get set to kick this one away. Here, a little bit of feedback in our audio line, so we're trying to correct that real quick. That one is dropped back inside the five. Tiger's trying to cover, and oh, man, a sandwich there. And I think in there on the tackle might have been Caleb Harner. Uh, can't quite tell if that is a nine or not. The jersey kind of wrinkled in front. That could have actually been Jace Onstad. Either way, a nice play there for the Erie Tiger special teams. It'll be first and 10 for Greeley West. All the way back at their own 11 is where they will start. So why Rick? And there's another fumble, but it was just miscommunication in the backfield as players trying to do some misdirection. And that will actually, I think, net. Nope, we'll just go back to the original line of scrimmage. So almost a fumble there. So second and 10. By the way, this is our first game of the year for these Erie Tiger Network students. We did have a couple helping us out with softball, but first football game. So uh, we're going to go through a couple learning experiences. As There's a blitz up the middle and a big sack. And blitzing up through the middle was Jacob Farling. And he just had meniscus surgery and was cleared to play this week. And Coach Cooper loves the potential of Jacob Farling. And a huge sack there, and going backward there is Wyrick. And the Tigers have come out of the gates red hot here to start this game. So Jacob Farling with the exceptional play, shooting into the backfield and making that play. We'll officially mark it with a loss of five. <clears throat> so it'll be third and 15. Wyrick, play action, throws out into the flat. And the Tigers cover that up pretty well, dancing around, getting to the corner, and losing a couple yards. I believe will be Ben Colgate. And that might have actually technically been a backward pass. You know, we'll give it a completion here, but a loss of a couple there as Ben Colgate couldn't get back to the line of scrimmage. Loss of one, anyway. And now a punt coming. And, man, these eerie Tigers, first game in 4A, look, Rock solid here to start. Back deep is Mason Vivi to receive. Uh, end over end kick. That'll bounce at the 38. Roll all the way. A good Spartan bounce into Tiger territory. And the Spartans will watch it roll all the way down to the 43. And that is where the Tigers will take over for their second possession of the game. 
So second possession here. We already saw the fireworks on that first possession. Blake Barnett on the quarterback keeper up the middle on the read option. And you can see one of the things the Tigers have done here that come out and they're spreading out a little bit more. And uh, we might see a couple more quarterback runs than we're used to seeing. As you put a dynamic athlete back there in Barnett. One of the luxury that Tigers do have is they have a stable full of good quarterbacks. And uh, I'm sure it stung. Uh, Alex Austin, I know, was in line to kind of be one of the starters or even Rerick. And they are both solid quarterbacks that should Blake uh, have a hiccup or uh, an injury, uh, God forbid, that uh, they could come in and I know they, they would fill that w role well as well. Offsides on Greeley West, so our first penalty of the game is on the Spartans. Uh, so a five-yard penalty. That'll be first and five now here for Erie. <coughs> Three wide. Four wide. Three to the left side. One to the near side. Read option. Blake's going to keep it again around the right side. Across the 40. Lowers his shoulder and goes across the 35. And so Blake Barnett. Another nice gain there for the freshman. From the 44 up to the 33, so an 11-yard pickup there for Barnett. And already the youngster has 45 yards rushing. Barnett again in the shotgun here. Three or four wide, they'll motion Piper in now as the H-back. Hand off to VV right side, follows Piper in the hole, stays on his feet, makes another man miss across the 20. VV fights his way down to the 10-yard line, and the Tigers' offense is rolling right now. A 23-yard pickup for the Tigers as VV gets that one all the way down inside to the 10, and so it'll be first and goal here for Erie. And actually, it's just outside the 10. So they, it'll be first and 10. They just got to get inside the one to get a first down. Barnett in the shotgun, flanking him is Vivi. Three wide to the left side, one wide to the right. He's going to hand it off Vivi. Left side, stiff arms, and will bowl over the top of a defender, but only pick up about a yard on the play. And that'll bring up second down. Tigers have not seen a third down here so far in their first two possessions of this game. In fact, that was their shortest gain of the night so far on the one-yard gain there by Vivi. Barnett barking the play at the line. He's got four wide again. To the near side is Rao. He's a big target. Wouldn't be surprised if they try to fade Rao, and Barnett runs it up the middle, kind of gets tripped up by the turf monster. And he is down at the eight yard line. So a pickup of a couple there for Barnett. Third and seven here for the Tigers. Trips to the far side. Snap to Barnett, play action, looking, fires the slant. Oh, and just couldn't quite fit it in. It was just maybe a touch behind Gage Nichols, but it was a well-defended play there by the Spartan defender, and now the Tiger field goal unit will run out onto the field with Jaden George. So the first field goal attempt of the year for the Tigers will be a 25-yarder. Snap low, hold is good though, and the kick is up and it's right through the pipes. So four twenty-one left, the Tigers take the lead. We'll take a quick time out here on the Erie Tiger Network. Are you looking to buy or sell a new home? Jen McGurk, an experienced real estate agent serving Erie, Vista Ridge, and the surrounding Denver area. For years, Jen has assisted all types of buyers and sellers with their real estate needs. 
give Jen a call today at 303-949-3331 or check out Jen Realty online at jenrealty.com. And welcome back into the Erie Tiger Network. 421 left. Tigers lead it in this first quarter. Tigers lead it 10 to nothing. And my voice is not in midseason form. Already starting to lose it here tonight. As a decent return here, a big hole. Oh, almost a horse collar tackle and then almost a face mask. I think it was just grabbing the jersey there. But a pretty good return there. That one was Jeremiah Martinez on the return. And so it'll be first and 10 for the Spartans at the Tiger 38. And so Wyrick will lead his troops back out onto the field. <coughs> so a little double wing formation here again. Motion man is Martinez. Tigers almost jumped on the hard count there by Wyrick. Jonathan Wyrick will send Martinez again. They'll hand it to the fullback who bounces it out. That's going to be maybe back to the line of scrimmage there for Ben Colgate. And they will mark it right back at the 38 again. So... Tigers, Coach Cooper mentioned their number one goal tonight is to stop the run early. They feel like if they can do that, they will really put themselves in a good position to win this game. And as you see, with the double tight formation, there's a run blitz by Erie, a little outside stretch handoff to Colgate, and he gets pelted out of bounds. In there on the tackle was Connor Quinn, uh, that I think came in to lay the big thump, but a couple yard gain, we'll call it almost, in fact, a four yard gain by Ben Colgate. And that'll bring up third and six here for the Spartans. Spartans really in a single file line to huddle up. And a unique kind of procedure. Never really seen that. Third and six here. Little misdirection, reverse handoff. The ball's on the turf. And I think it was picked back up by Martinez. But, man, the Spartans right now are having a real tough time with exchanges in the backfield. That is the third time tonight that we have seen the ball hit the turf and a five-yard loss there. And as a team right now, Greeley West only 1.5 yards a carry. So the Tigers are doing what they wanted to, which is snuff out the run. Now they'll punt this away. Punt does go away, high arcing punt. Vivi's gonna field it. Vivi drops it, gets slammed to the turf, but is able to pick it up. That bounced back into him. That was a bit lucky there. As he dropped that and was being tackled, that could have easily uh, been kicked away there. But with 3.12 remaining in this first quarter, the Tigers will take over, and they have had two pretty good drives. Last one was a good defensive stand in the red zone by the Spartans. So first and 10 now for Erie. And Caleb Thyssen will come out as the running back. Coach Cooper said he could really be an X factor for these Tigers this year. They're going to run read option. Blake's going to keep it himself over the right side. He's had his green grass in front of him across midfield. The 40, the 30, and he's going to pull up out of bounds after a huge gain from the 25 all the way almost to the other 25. Forty. Eight, 47 yards on the carry by Blake Barnett. So the freshman already with 94 yards rushing. Barnett will run 
Play action, has a man, throws it down the seam. It is juggled and dropped. It was in the hands of Vivi and he couldn't hold on. <clears throat> but a good throw there by Barnett. And Vivi just couldn't quite hold it in. That was one of those where you look back at the lights and that ball got on him in a hurry. So second and 10 now for the Tigers. Ball spotted at the near hash. Four wide with Rao, the lone receiver here on the near side. They'll send Piper in motion. Thyssen in the backfield. They'll hand it to Thyssen. Left side puts his foot in the ground and lowers the head and grinds his way forward for a pickup of six on the play. And so Caleb Thyssen with his first touch of 2020. Third and four here for the Tigers. Barnett in the shotgun. And a pre-snap, we might have an illegal formation here. Illegal procedure call either way. That's the first penalty of the Tiger season. And that wipes away the good run by Thyssen. So now after having third and manageable, Tigers are third and nine. Gus Fonseca Walker will check into the game. So you have Walker, Nichols, and Rao out there. And I think we're going to see a timeout. So Tigers couldn't get their personnel quite in time. We'll stick right here. This is a reminder, Tiger fans, uh, to be on our team here. Uh, obviously, we're incurring some expenses uh, every time we do this broadcast. But if you support us on Patreon, that would be a huge help. New to Patreon this week is Patreon swag. So if you become a member at a certain level, we have all kinds of levels, $1, $10, $25, and $40 a month sponsorships. Uh, if you're at that $40 a month sponsorship, I think you get a t-shirt, a tote bag, a hoodie, all kinds of Erie Tiger Network goodies throughout the year. Uh, you get some goodies too for being a $10 and $25 a month member. And you can even be an in-game read sponsor for $25 a month on Erie Tiger Network. So we certainly would appreciate that if you went to patreon.com slash Erie Tiger Network and supported us because we'll be broadcasting all season long. Third and nine here for the Tigers. Barnett is in the shotgun. Three wide to the left side. They'll send a man in motion. And I believe that's Otzieger. A little read option. And this time Barnett only able to get a couple of yards on the quarterback keepers. And I think we misspelled Patreon on there. My wife is texting me, getting on me for that because she knows who probably typed up that graphic. I won't say who, but it's probably the guy talking to you right now. Barnett in the shotgun here. Tigers going for it on fourth, kind of in no man's land. Barnett's going to catch, roll, stop, throw back, screen to the near side. It's wide open there for Vivi up the sideline, and the Tigers will score. And a first touchdown pass of Barnett's career on the little rollout throwback screen. A 25-yard touchdown pass to Mason Vivi. And the Tigers with an exceptional first quarter of play here. And they're trying to kick a field or an extra point to go on top 17 to nothing. So their first game in 3A, their first quarter in 4A, I beg your pardon. And what a quarter it has been. Two touchdowns, one on the ground by Barnett, one through the air by way of Barnett to Vivi. And the Tigers are on top, 17 to nothing. Tiger fans, don't forget to subscribe to the Erie Tiger Network. Uh, if you click the notification icon every time we are live for one of these games, 
uh, you'll be notified. We will also, I think, at some point uh, squeeze in a JV football game or two this season just because we know the limited capacity uh, in terms of fans. We really want to try and reach out as best we can to the fans here this year. So uh, sometimes those will be last minute. So that's a, another reason why you want to subscribe and click the notification icon. So a nice play design there by uh, Coach Toof. Uh, Tigers ran that a couple times last season. I talked about that, and he said, you know, we ran that at Broomfield when I was quarterback of the Broomfield Eagles all those years ago, and that was a play we liked to run, and well, they did love having that in their arsenal, and it was ran well. A little poocher fielded on a couple hops, and Martinez trying to break contain, and the Tigers finally flow to him, and he gets out to the 32 and that is where Greeley West will start. So Greeley West, in this quarter, this is their fourth possession, but they've put the ball on the turf three times. They've only turned it over once. And they're looking to cross midfield for the first time tonight. Tiger defense doing a good job. A new defensive coordinator, Coach Wu Ching, also a special education teacher here in the building. And you know, I think one of the things they want to accomplish here is just to keep it simple. Uh, limited number of practices. So I don't know that we'll see a lot of exotic looks from the Tigers this year as uh, Coach Wu Ching just tries to make sure things are simple and they're, they're doing their job. As Colgate will get a nice eight yard run there on first down. One minute remaining here in this first quarter of play. I'll try and say the uh, time as much as I can because that's a little bit of an issue with our scoreboard graphic right now. Second and a short two. Wyrick will hand it off on the little counter play and the Tigers dial up a nice run stuff and kind of set the edge was Connor Quinn, and that's another nice play. We've called his name a couple of times. And Jarmio, tough sledding so far for this rushing attack. Only two yards a carry for Greeley West. 20 seconds left to play here in this fourth quarter. Not sure what the play clock is at, if they'll have to snap this one or they'll just take it to the second quarter. I think Greeley West would be content to just see this quarter be put in the history books and move on from it. So they will do that. They'll run off to the sidelines. But at the end of the first quarter, the Tigers lead it 17 to nothing. We'll take a quick timeout here on the Erie Tiger Network. Front Range Landfill puts all your needs in front of everything else. Front Range Landfill won Erie Chamber of Commerce Business of the Year Award as well as being featured on national television. We are very proud of our facility and we welcome the opportunity to address your disposal needs. Our focus is on customer service. We strive to achieve easy and rapid access in and out of the facility. We feel certain that we will exceed your expectations of your solid waste disposal requirements. Choose Front Range Landfill for all your landfill needs. You will be pleased. Are you looking to buy or sell a new home? Jen McGurk, an experienced real estate agent serving Erie, Vista Ridge, and the surrounding Denver area. For years, Jen has assisted all types of buyers and sellers with their real estate needs. Give Jen a call today at 303-949-3331 or check out Jen Realty online at jenrealty.com. We don't want to miss a play. And welcome back in, a short time between quarters here. In fact, Greeley West came ready right out of that quarter and Tigers surrender a first down run and a pickup there of six yards for Jarmio. Best run of the night for Dimitri Jarmio. He was the returning leading rusher from this Greeley West attack last year. Lost a couple seniors from the skill positions did Greeley West. So first and 10. 
Wyrick will hand it off left side. A helmet pops off there and a four yard gain. Go a little more north than south is Greeley West. I think they're tired of trying to stretch the Tiger defense and they have decided. Thank you. Loretta Hart in a delivery up to the box of water. No Grayson Blaylock to call color right now. We're planning to work in some players or some students in to call color at some point this season, but carrying it by yourself, throat gets a little parched. Handoff there again to Jarmillo, and he is met by Piper right at the stick, and I think they're gonna call it a first down. So a six yard pickup there by Jarmillo. No, they will call him just a little bit short. They stopped the clock, so I thought they were stopping it because the first down. So now they'll run it here, and a penalty, and I think we're gonna have an illegal procedure call. Well, this is what you have sometimes when you don't have very long, it's actually gonna be offsides on Erie. So first down there for Greeley West. When you don't have a lot of time to prep, not very many weeks here. In fact, there's a couple Tiger players. I know Brendan Murphy who ran cross country also playing football, but because there was overlap, he actually had to wait a little while due to COVID rules. And so you also have to have a certain number of practices before you can hit, and that's always the case every year. But uh, this year, everything kind of condensed in terms of time, only a seven game season. As there's a loss of one that time, so good job there defensively for the Tigers front unit. The nose guard kind of eating up some space. I know Keaton Dennison, actually he's not in there right now. I think kind of in there is Ryan McConnell. Goes both ways, John Pastore. We'll talk about him a little bit too. His coaching staff loves Big John. Almost the Maryland eye formation there. A pitch and a cutback, and this is the best run of the night. Jaramillo up the left side across the 10 toward the end zone. He fumbled, did he fumble through the end zone? And did he fumble out of the end zone or did he fumble out of bounds? If, it's, if it broke the plane, it's a touchback and eerie ball. If it's out of bounds, it will be Greeley West ball. So this is a huge call. And I don't know if we have that on our replay. And no, they will say he is short. So a 39 yard gain for Jaramillo, and they'll have the ball at the one. And a stuff there at the goal line. And Spartans trying to go quick, and they could catch too many men on the field here for Erie, and they do. Did they score it anyway? And actually, it's going to be a dead ball foul. It's offsides, too many men, encroachment. So an illegal substitution there for Erie is the official call, but... That's about a half a yard. By the way, Jaramillo, I've been saying Jaramillo. I should know better than that. So second and goal here from the one. Wyrick under center. He's gonna hand it to Jaramillo who will dive into the end zone for a touchdown. So the first score of the game here in the second quarter, every score has been down there in that end zone and it's a one yard run by Jaramillo. With 9.05 remaining. And so Greeley West on the board. And you know, the, the between quarters, they 
took their time in a late substitution and a block. And flags flying. I think that's going to be on Greeley West for a false start, essentially. A man in motion toward the line of scrimmage. I mean, that's essentially what was happening. But I don't know if they'll call that a dead ball or just an illegal substitution. And they do call an illegal substitution, so that gives Erie the opportunity to decline. If they would have called that a false start, that would have been a dead ball play. So the extra point is no good as it is blocked. I think maybe John Pastore got his big paw in there and was able to block it. And it's a 17-6 lead here for the Tigers. By the way, for you Tiger fans wondering where Grayson Blaylock is, he's at the University of Oklahoma. So he texted me a couple times during the game trying to correct me on a couple things. So figured I got to give him the shout out. But uh, Tiger fans, we talked a little about the COVID rules and the new conference and all that. If you want to be a sponsor on the Erie Tiger Network, like a, uh, the Gen Realty Broadcast booth, as she's our title sponsor now, email me, Brandon underscore, or Bird underscore Brandon at svvsd.org. And actually, uh, if the, you couldn't quite see the underscore, I think, on that graphic, but it is an underscore there. And so if you're a business in Erie, hey, we have a large target audience this year. 434 viewers for a non-conference football game. That is a lot right now and might even continue to grow as the season goes along. So hand raise and the kickoff. VV back to take it. He'll take it at the 11. He boots it forward, trying to fall on it. It squirts free, and I think a tiger fell on it. I think it was Gavin Malik or Malik that fell on it. And so the Tigers will retain possession. That's the second time that VV has put the ball on the turf during a special teams play. So first and 10 here for Erie. You know, you give up a score. You want to respond if you're the Tigers. Otherwise, that, you start to give confidence back to the, the team in white. As they put together a nice drive there. They came out the second quarter, just started going a little more north and south. Barnett keeps it on the read. Knifes by a defender. Cuts up the field. Flag flying those. He stays on his feet. And you see Barnett so strong continue to just break tackles. And it'll be a 14-yard carry, but I think this one's probably coming back. Coach Cooper said, you know, it's not our most experienced front we ever had, but this might be the best offensive line I've had in my time here. He said that 2018 year with Roper, you had Bunch of experience there and some talent, but talent across the board, this one's pretty good. But that is the first penalty for them here tonight. And it's technically an eight yard penalty, first holding call, I should say. So that will wipe away a good Barnett run. Barnett has kept a lot on the read option. That's something he'll kind of have to grow into. Learn to make the reads. Not saying he necessarily made a wrong one as he sails one long there for Gus Fonseca Walker. Gus, the speedster in the slot. Also a state wrestler is Gus. So good to see Gus out there. We've seen Gus get some carries in the past, so kind of converted more to a slot receiver. And I like what Erie, the staff, has done. They want to get their playmakers on the field all at the same time. You see Andrew Piper, Mason Vivi, Gage Nichols, Gus, Braden Rout, all on the field at the same time. And that's why I think you're seeing a lot of three wide sets. Little scissor action there as there's a handoff to Vivi, a good sidestep move. And Vivi with a nice gain there on second down. He'll pick up 13 on the carry. And that'll make it third and five here. Five 
Tiger's taking a long time to get in the call. The Tiger coaches uh, utilizing a different box here in the stadium this year. They're in the box next to our booth, so I can hear their calls a little bit. Maybe that'll add some color to what's going on. Man in motion. That's Ott Zieger and a timeout being called by Coach Cooper as he ran out of the field, did not want the penalty there. And so with third and five and a crucial down after surrendering a score, Tigers want to get a first down here. They'll talk this one over in the timeout. Tiger fans, don't forget to follow us on social media. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, Erie Tiger Media. And we update things as we go along throughout the year. That's where you can find our stream links some of the times as well. So follow us. Brandon Bird here with you. Madison Gambon is our director here tonight. Adana Fuqua is our spotter. Stacy Bussinger, Boosinger, beg your pardon, is our replay operator. And Alex Schnagelberger is our camera operator here tonight. Third and five, a long five here for the Tigers. Barnett in the shotgun, hard count, takes it on the second. Rolling, looking, fires the out route, catch with the tiptoes in, and no, dropping it out of bounds. Couldn't corral it was Gus. And so a couple drops here by Tiger receivers have kind of hurt the Tigers here. He had the drop touchdown pass by Vivi and the drop there by Fonseca Walker. And now the Tigers are going to be forced to punt for their first time tonight. It'll be... Andrew Piper, who, if you remember, punted last year before he got hurt. And, man, you just hope Piper can uh, stay healthy this year. He has been injured all three years in the Tiger program. He is here, and he's healthy. And uh, what a mental grind that that has been for Piper. I know Coach Higgins, I've talked to him, and he, he loves Andrew Piper and the grit that he has shown in his career. Big punt there. And a big bounce all the way down and angled away. And man, that's gonna roll all the way down to the 15. And so Piper pumped up about that one. And that'll pin back Greeley West at their own 15. And that is where they will take over. Huge thank to our sponsors here tonight on the Erie Tiger Network broadcast of this uh, football game as we're coming live to you from the Gen Realty Broadcast booth. Of course, uh, we are also sponsored by Go Airheads, Airsoft Field and Store in Erie, Colorado. Jeannie Hulse of State Farm, she is one of our sponsors from Front Range Landfill and Germany Law. And I am actually a personal endorser of Germany Law as they have handled some of my legal work. So thank you, Germany Law, Susie and her law firm. And there is a throw, and it's intercepted by Piper. Wyrick's first pass is intercepted. Piper breaks a tackle, and he's going to run it back 40 yards across the field to the other side. Still on his feet. Cuts back again. Piper will score. Touchdown, Andrew Piper. About a 32-ish yard return, but I tell you what, he ran about 90 yards on that. So Wyrick's second pass of the night is picked off, and Andrew Piper catches it in. It's nice to have a running back returning <laughs> an interception. And when we talked with Coach Cooper, about impact players on defense. He said, Andrew Piper is that impact player on defense, and there is an example right there. Snap is good, kick is up, different kicker for the Tigers. That one is Dominic Datavio, or Datavio, and it is good, and the Tigers lead it 24 to six. So after surrendering a touchdown, being forced to punt, the Tigers 
get right back at it with a pick six and Brian Wuching got to be excited there with his defense. Making a big play. And why Rick starting as a freshman. That's something he'll learn there too is to clean up that footwork. I'm, I think he kind of threw that before he planted his back foot and kind of hung it up in the air. And so that's something I'm sure the Greeley West coaches will continue to work on with Wyrick. But I already mentioned, uh, man, to start at 4A as a freshman at quarterback, that's, per, that's something special. So Wyrick, I'm sure he will have a great career, but a tough moment there for the youngster. That one is a side spinning kick taken back at the two. Martinez finds another hole. Martinez finally tackled by Dominic Dadavio. All the way up to the 46 is where Greeley West will start. Well, uh, October night for the first game of the year, but you know what? How lucky are we that we still get football here? As uh, it seemed like it wasn't gonna be the case this year. So I know I'm certainly excited about it. I hope you are as well. And now first and 10 here for Greeley West. Wyrick actually in the shotgun, actually, it's Martinez, I beg your pardon, in the Wildcat. And he breaks the tackles. He stepped through an arm tackle across the 20. And Wyrick corralled out of bounds inside the 12. So a 39-yard, and they'll actually spot him at the 15. 39-yard pickup there for Jeremiah... Martinez, is that right? Jeremiah Martinez. Jeremiah Martinez, one of my very good friends, but a different Jeremiah Martinez. For those of you in the Erie community, you might know Miss Abby Martinez, the choir teacher at Erie Middle School. Her husband is Jeremiah Martinez, so got confused there that maybe I would just mix it up, but no, both Jeremiah Martinez's. As there is another wildcat run by Martinez. And he'll pound his way forward for a couple yards. Martinez now 49 yards. And Greeley West much better on the ground now, averaging over six yards a carry through the first quarter. They average around two. So they've been explosive here with a couple 39 yard runs, one by Jaramillo, one by Martinez. And the Tigers will have to clean that up. Martinez again running Wildcat. So they're just going to stick with him. He fakes the handoff. He'll run it over the left side. Grinds the feet and has yardage close to a first down. Not quite sure if it's enough. And it will be an eyelash short. So third and one here. And a player is down for Greeley West. And we will step aside. 549 remaining here in the second quarter. We'll take a timeout here on the Erie Tiger Network. Front Range Landfill puts all your needs in front of Are you looking to buy or sell a new home? Jen McGurk, an experienced real estate agent serving Erie, Vista Ridge, and the surrounding Denver area. For years, Jen has assisted all types of buyers and sellers with their real estate needs. Give Jen a call today at 303-949-3331 or check out Jen Realty online at jenrealty.com. Do you have a plan in place for your family's future in the event something happens to you? Are you caring for aging parents, grandparents, or a loved one with special needs? The Germany Law Firm, named 2017 Erie's Chamber Business of the Year, provides expert legal guidance and peace of mind for you and your family in the areas of probate, elder law, and estate planning. Visit Germany Law Firm's And welcome back in here, Erie Tiger Network, third and one. And I think it might have been Martinez that was shaken up. 
to Jaramillo, the deep back. Wyrick, the quarterback, run blitz here for the Tigers, but they pitch wide of the blitz, but multiple Tigers in pursuit. That's going to be real close. They couldn't quite get him on the first wave. And they will say that he is short. So Jaramillo stopped for no gain. And I think in there was Jacob Farling on the tackle. So, nope, they will call it a first down. So they did give him the first. I, did, I saw the marker change to fourth. Now, straight up the field, met in the hole, bowls his way through his Jaramillo, and he scores a touchdown. And so a touchdown run of four yards by Dimitri Jaramillo. Dimitri Jaramillo with the carry for Greeley West. And Greeley back on the board again with 4.58 remaining here in the first half of play. A four-yard scamper. And, man, he bowled over the top of a Tiger defender there that met him in the hole. So good, tough running there by Jaramillo. And they'll go for two is Greeley West. Tigers trying to jump to snap, and it was just barely missed time. But Wyrick, who had to roll to his left, the right-handed quarterback, couldn't quite fit it in there to get it. And so uh, no good on the conversion attempt. And so the Tigers doubling up Greeley West right now, 24 to 12. We will be carrying not the audio, but we will we'll be carrying the dance team here at halftime. Is that is something that they would like us to do, especially since their parents are limited in being able to see them. So we will carry that throughout the rest of, or throughout the half. We'll try and have some halftime highlights for you. As Stacy, I think, has been doing a good job of tracking some highlights for us. So we'll have some of those at halftime. 4.55 remaining here in the first half of play. Tigers have been a little bit spotty on special teams in the return game. Let's see if they can get a good one here. As Mason VV back to return. VV such a huge year last year for these Tigers. As he'll take that one from the 12. VV, big hole there on the left. VV gets through that hole. VV didn't like that he fumbled, and he says, you know what? I'm tired of dropping the ball. I'm going to take it to the house. 90-yard return for Mason VV. And so both times, Erie has responded once with an interception, that time with a kick return. And a 90-yard return for VV with 4.38 remaining here in the first half. Tigers, they are loaded with some explosive players. And you know, ever watch Erie's social media, the football team? Always showing weight room stuff. Oh, is there a penalty all the way back and no one saw? And the Erie coaches can't believe it. They had their special teams out there already. I don't even see a flag out there. And I think even the Erie coaches are confused. And they're going to call a targeting illegal blow to the helmet. So some type of blindside block, and that will wipe a touchdown off the board. And I still don't see the flag anywhere. <laughs> so, they're bringing it all the way back to the 14. So that happened somewhere around the 29-yard line, but I never saw a flag. Even looking back, never saw it. All right, so wipe off the touchdown, and now the Tiger offense will take to the field. The good news is the defense gets a little bit of rest. <laughs> Barnett will send a man in motion. Barnett flanked by, I believe, Thyssen. We'll give it to Thyssen. 
Presses the hole, bounces outside of it. Now he'll turn it up the sideline. Thyssen with a nice carry. Oh, and he gets hit late, and there comes a hanky. And Thyssen stood up, and the Tiger coach is saying, get back. Do not get a retaliation call. It was a nice run there by Thyssen from the 13 all the way up to the 43, a gain of 30 yards. And then they're gonna tack on more. And actually they're gonna call it all the way up to the 40, so a 27 yard pickup. But then a 15 yard penalty. Runs the ball back to up to the Greeley West 45 yard line. So Tigers now in Spartan territory. First and 10, Barnett checks the sideline. They'll send a man in motion. And read option and Barnett decided late. He'll carry it though. You see the acceleration there, Barnett. He's still able to break contain. Wasn't quite sure. That's one of the freshman moments that Coach Cooper talked about and now a late flag coming in again. So an eight. Maybe seven yard run there by Barnett. And someone said something. And there's a personal foul and not sure who this is gonna be on. Come on fellas, let cooler heads prevail. We're a little happy to just be playing football at this point. And it is on Greeley West and on Erie, so Double personal fouls. And they will actually say that the yardage is, is it enough for a first down? It is, so a 10 yard pickup there by Barnett. He's got 106 yards rushing here in this first half. That was kind of what, what I was about to say before the flag started flying. That was one of those freshman learning moments. Gotta be a little more decisive if you're Blake. Make that read early. Does the end commit down or does he hold contain? And that's your read, that's your key there. And a little bit indecisive. Now he's just gonna hand it straight off to Vivi up the middle, Vivi backing his way, and Vivi, and I was talking about the weight room, Vivi's so strong. In fact, this whole Tiger football team has really done some good work in the weight room over the last years. There's a nine yard scamper by Vivi. Officially give him eight, and they'll bring second and two. Barnett quickly to the line of scrimmage. Kind of feel like a tiger throw might happen here on second and short. Maybe down the sideline. Nope, they'll give it to Vivi around that left end. I think even Greeley West was thinking that. They kind of bailed out of that early, but that gave some running room there for Vivi, and he'll pick up seven more. It's only the fifth carry of the night for Vivi. 51 yards. Tigers have... Rushed it for 14 yards a pop tonight. 190 yards rushing in this first half. Barnett calling the play here at the line. Too wide to the far side, too wide here to the near side. It's Nichols and Walker, Gus Fonseca Walker here on the near side. Man in motion, I think that is Ochsieger. Now Barnett, play action, rolling, looking downfield, fires kind of sidearm, has his man, it's Otziger, rumbles his way into the end zone. Touchdown, Tigers! A 20-yard touchdown pass. Barnett was patient. He just waited, waited, and waited. And Austin Otziger with the touchdown. Octavio out to kick the extra point. So the Tigers had a touchdown wiped off the board with the penalty, but it no harm, no foul there as they're able to punch it in the end zone anyways and actually chew a little bit of clock in the process. 31 to 12. 
By the way, a shout out, people watching all across this glorious land, including Cocoa Beach, Florida. Jamie Carpenter is watching out there. Wanted to give her a shout out. Be a request of the athletic director, Justin Carpenter. So we know we have some viewers in Florida. We typically have some viewers I know in Illinois and Minnesota. And if you're watching from somewhere far away, we'd love for you to let us know in the chat. We always love to see where you're watching from. So Erie set to kick this one off. Dottavio will tee it up. Tigers have gotten gashed a couple times on the return game here. They've also had a couple nice plays. See if they can kind of recapture that early game form as that one is a spinner down there finally picked off the turf at the five and they do cover that one well. Greeley West will get pinned inside the 20 and they'll start things around the 17 yard line. 301 remaining here in this first half of play. Coming to you soon, we kind of mentioned uh, the new broadcast equipment that we'll be getting here in the Gen Realty broadcast booth. Uh, we will also be getting um, a new website here soon as well. And that will kind of be a little bit more of a hub and we'll even offer some apparel you can buy, some Air Tiger Network apparel, all kinds of goodies. Martinez in the backfield, he's going to give it to Jaramillo on the end around. And Jaramillo breaks some tackles, but finally a slew of black jerseys will clean him up, but not before he gets 12 yards and a first down. So Jaramillo finally starting to find his footing in the ground game, 72 yards on the ground tonight for Jaramillo. Pickup of 12 on that play. By the way, Benji Havener out there for the Tigers on defense. Nice to see him back as a hamstring issue sidelined him a year ago. Oh, and a huge hit by Andrew Piper as he just pelts Jaramillo after a pickup of eight. Wow. And Andrew Piper looked like a laser-guided missile on that tackle. And Greeley West take it too long, so they are going to take a timeout here. We'll take a quick timeout. 2.28 remaining here in the first half. And welcome back in, Jaramillo on the run outside to the left, out of the timeout. But it looks like there's a flag. So good first half there. So far for the Tigers, but they want to hold on here. And that is a flag right at the first down marker. 
So this is going to make it second and ten now instead of second and two. It'll be second and ten for the Spartans. And a break there for the Tigers. Wyrick back under center here in the little double wing formation. They'll hand it off. It's a reverse. Ball hits the turf. Tigers getting back there, and they swarm. The black jerseys of the Tigers just engulf Martinez all the way back for a loss on the play of, let's see, 10, 11, maybe, nope, we'll call it 11 yards. And it is Jeremiah Martinez that is shaken up on the play here. So we are going to step aside again. Time out here. Go to where your friends are. Go to where the action's at. Go find your sense of adventure. Go Airheads. Airsoft Field and Store located in Erie, Colorado. Go Airheads and go Tigers. And welcome back in, Erie Tiger Network, live from the Gen Realty Broadcast booth here at Tiger Stadium. A slew of Tiger fans have gathered on the hillside outside of the stadium, and therefore outside of Erie jurisdiction. And that's probably the smart way to do things if you're trying to watch the game but can't get in the stadium. And now Wyrick will throw the little bubble screen pass on the far side, and the Tigers diagnose and engulf. And that is the a gain of, well, they're actually going to move the sticks back. Wyrick so far tonight, he has, I believe, thrown three passes for negative two yards and an interception. So the pass game not really working right now for Greeley West. A little bit one-dimensional. And a timeout for Erie because they want the ball back and a chance to score with 149 remaining here in this first half. There is some debate in the broadcast booth and on our text line of the pronunciation of Aiden Otziger. Madison Gambon is saying it's Zinger. Grayson Wolf is saying... Och Zigger, and so if you know, let us know in the chat. If you know for sure what it is, because we are we're in a lively debate here. Even Mr. Rupp in the booth next to us is uh, getting involved in this conversation. High arcing punt, fair catch called, and another fumble. And I think Greeley West topped on it. Two Tigers were calling for it. They ran into each other, and Greeley West has it at midfield. And for the third time tonight, third time's a charm for Greeley West, as that's the third time the Tigers have put the ball on the turf in the return game. So you call a timeout to get the ball back and make something happen, and now Greeley West has an opportunity here with good field position. Now shotgun slant behind the receiver there. As Wyrick was trying to connect with the slot man. I think that was Ben Colgate out on the pattern. 
Now they're back at the line. See if they put it in the air again. Wyrick drops back to pass again, and that one is slammed back by John Pastore. And Coach Cooper said John Pastore. John Pastore spotted down that pass. Is a special talent. Had the potential to be a D1 player, he thinks. They just want to see him blossom this year. Third and 10. Wyrick, and I don't think Greeley was set, and they're going to throw it down the field and another interception. It's Gus Fonseca Walker catching it. He's still on his feet, and he'll finally tumble down with 118 remaining here. But there is a flag on the play, and I'm not sure if it's going to be an offside or an illegal procedure or what the heck is going on. And it's an illegal shift on Greeley West. So another turnover, and the Tigers will get a chance to score here with 118 remaining here in the first half. From the 29-yard line, we will have first and 10. So Barnett in the shotgun here. Low snap, catches it, rolls to his right, looking downfield, fires on the run, and drops it right in the hands of his receiver and into the end zone. I believe that was Braden Rao. It is, touchdown Tigers. What a throw on the run, a little Pat Mahomes flick of the wrist. And a 71-yard connection from Barnett to Rao. And for Barnett, it's the third touchdown pass of the night. And that was a thing of beauty. My goodness. That was right in the bread basket on a dead sprint to the sideline. Wow. As that kick is... Low, but finds its way through the pipes. Well, I'll tell you what. If you don't know, I'm also the golf coach at Erie High School. And one of the freshmen that made the golf team, uh, Keegan McKenzie, got a chance to talk to him and his dad after tryouts actually early in the season. They brought up Blake Barnett, and they're like, you know, Blake, he's, he might start as a freshman. I said, really? He's only a freshman. And there's some pretty good quarterbacks on this roster. And they looked me in the eye and they go, no, he is special. He is a different kind of special. And so uh, you saw that on display on that last throw. My goodness. So with 107 remaining here. Keegan McKenzie, I mentioned on the golf team, I should have mentioned, also a football player in this Erie program. He'll be in action in the freshman game. Three Tiger golfers are also football players. It was fun to have this year. Austin Baselli, one of them. He's actually the nephew of NFL offensive great Tony Baselli. And Gage Nichols, who... We will call his name before tonight's over for sure. Gage playing both ways tonight for the Tigers. In at linebacker, we've seen him out there at receiver a lot, and he's on the field right now with a little pink hand towel. So 38-12, Tigers lead it, 102 remaining here in the first half. And it's been kind of a long first half with all the scoring here for Erie. Now Wyrick. A little bit of a misdirection there and kind of weaving his way back was Brandon or Bryson Schminke. A gain of six there for Schminke. 
Another misdirection play, it's Jaramillo on the little inside misdirection give, and he just kind of slaloms his way for a first down. Pick up there of about 14 yards for Jaramillo. 26 seconds left, now up near midfield. Let's see if they're a little more aggressive here. But Wyrick under center. He'll run play action, a roll to his right, looks downfield, fires the little out route, just a touch behind his intended target. That was Ben Colgate. So Ben Colgate couldn't quite corral it in. It'll be second and 10. See if they go to the air again here. That time, got Wyrick out in the flats. Make it a little bit easier throw. Jaramillo gets the pitch, strings it out to the sideline, and will step out of bounds after a pickup of four. So Jaramillo with 13 seconds left here and a third down. What does Greeley West do here? Do they gamble or do they just take this one to the sideline? No locker rooms here during the COVID rules. Little reverse give and Gage Nichols trying to drag the running back to the turf. Pickup of 12 and a timeout. And I think that was Schmeeke on the run. And there is Gage Nichols. Kind of playing the contain man here on the near side. So first and 10 and with five seconds left, Greeley West did call a timeout. So they're gonna run one more play here. And if you're gonna call a timeout, it's to try and score points. And certainly not to get 10 yards. It's not to kick a field goal. Uh, an attempt here would be a 60 yarder. So, does Wyrick attempt the pass? Do they have a older quarterback on the roster? Can throw it maybe a little further that's gonna throw Hail Mary? What will the Spartans do here? Tigers already a couple interceptions, one by Gus Fonseca Walker, and one that was a pick six by Andrew Piper. Tigers playing real soft coverage here. Vivi and Piper, the deep men. Wyrick gonna wind up and launch down the sideline, and it, oh, through the pause of the intended Tiger, or in the Tiger defender, and so that'll do it. So at the end of the first half, it's 38-12. We'll have the dance team, we'll have some halftime highlights, and we'll have some stats for you as well, but we'll first take a quick time out here on the Erie Tiger Network. You are watching the ETN.
It's more than a combo deal. And welcome back it's to the Tiger stuff. Network. As you this will is see, your the, home. Uh, your car. team perform here. And you want to give them the protection our they deserve. doesn't get taken off With line. home and auto insurance. Uh, but uh, State just Farm wanted to get them it. a shout out. And it's we will why carry they're their here. Performance. They're live on the Erie In Tiger Erie, talk to State Farm agent Jeannie Hulse. Junior Jojo Wright. All-American junior Kalen Decker. All-American sophomore Emily Freck. All-American sophomore Lauren Rahillen. All-American sophomore McLean Finn. Sophomore Madison Goodrich. Freshman Gianna Eisenberg. Freshman Riley Middleton. Freshman Avery O'Connor. And freshman Kaylee Killian. The Palms team is coached by Chelsea and Corbia and Megan Farley. Please enjoy their halftime performance, choreographed by Hallie Mansoor.
you. Do you have a plan in place for your family's future in the event something happens to you? Are you caring for aging parents, grandparents, or a loved one with special needs? The Germany law firm named 2017 Erie's Chamber Business of the Year provides expert legal guidance and peace of mind for you and your family in the areas of probate, elder law, and estate planning. Visit Germany Law Firm's Erie Village office or website at coelderlaw.net set up a personalized consultation. Have you ever wanted to support the Erie Tiger Network? This well, wait. Well, okay. And welcome back in here at halftime on the Erie Tiger Network. And what an exciting first half it was. We're going to show you those first half highlights. I right. asked about the roster. We'll, we'll throw up that graphic here again in a little bit. So, uh, But we don't have a, a copy of the link. Uh, to post for you, at least right now. Little reverse inside misdirection. Give in a fumble! It's pop! The diaper dandy will start things in the shotgun. He's flanked to his left with VV. That's Piper in motion across the formation. Little play action. Barnett's going to stop. Fires, completes his first career pass out in the flat to Piper. And a good game there. Good play call there for Coach Toof. Now first and 10, fresh set of downs, ball spotted on the near hash. Barnett takes the snap. He's going to run read option. He'll keep it himself up the middle. There's the freshman, bounces it to the outside, and Blake Barnett begins his career with some... By the way, this is our first game of the year for these Erie Tiger Network students. We did have a couple helping us out with softball, but first football game. So uh, we're going to go through a couple learning experiences as there's a blitz up the middle and a big sack and blitz... Running back. Coach Cooper said he could really be an X factor for these Tigers this year. They're going to run read option. Blake's going to keep it himself over the right side. He's had his green grass in front of him across midfield. The 40, the 30, and he's going to pull up out of bounds after a huge gain from the... That's probably the guy talking to you right now. Barnett in the shotgun here. Tigers going for it on fourth, kind of in no man's land. Barnett's going to catch, roll, stop, throw back, screen to the near side. It's wide open there for Vivi up the sideline, and the Tigers will score. And a first touchdown pass of Barnett's. Susie and her law firm. And there's a throw, and it's intercepted by Piper. Wyrick's first pass is intercepted. Piper breaks a tackle, and he's going to run it back 40 yards across the field to the other side. Still on his feet. Cuts back again. Piper will score! That is Ochseeger. Now Barnett play action, rolling, looking downfield. Fires kind of sidearm. Has his man. It's Ochseeger. Rumbles his way into the end zone. Touchdown, Tigers! out there for the Tigers on defense. Nice to see him back is a hamstring issue sideline him a year ago. Oh, and a huge hit by Andrew Piper as he just pelts Harami. So Barnett in the shotgun here. Low snap, catches it, rolls to his right, looking downfield, fires on the run, and drops it right in the hands of his receiver and into the end zone. I believe that was Bray. And welcome back in. You saw the amazing first half highlights there. Uh, let's go over some of the first half numbers here. Negative two yards passing for Greeley West there in that first half, but 169 yards on the ground. Their first score was a one yard run by Jaramillo in the second quarter with 9.05 left. And then he uh, punched another one in from four yards out with 4.58 remaining for the Tigers Blake Barnett eight attempted passes four completions 132 yards and four of or three of those four completions went for touchdowns 
190 yards on the ground for the Tigers in that first half. 51 from Mason Vivi, 106 from Blake Barnett, 33 from Caleb Thyssen. Receiving Andrew Piper with a 16 yard catch, Mason Vivi with a 25 yard catch. Um, Aiden Otziger with a 20 yard catch and we'll eventually uh, get his name correctly. And then Braden Rao with a 71 yard catch. So hopefully one of you in the chat know um, that uh, how to say his name and can correct us. By the way, uh, welcome to all the Greeley West fans that are also watching this stream that couldn't come down due to the limited capacity. Thank you for joining us and uh, we appreciate you joining us here in the in the uh, the stream here on the Erie Tiger Network. The scoring summary, by the way, for the Erie Tigers: Blake Barnett, a 34-yard run in the first quarter with 9:34. Uh, his little fake to Vivi actually fooled our cameraman. So we'll see if the uh, Erie football film has that run, and we'll try and tweet out the whole view of what that run looks like. Uh, and then a field goal by Jaden George in the first quarter with 421 left from 25 yards. Mason Vivi took a 25 yard screen to the half in the first quarter with 133. Then a pick six after the Tigers first punt of the night. That was Andrew Piper 32 yards out with 713 left in the second quarter. Then a touchdown pass to Otziger. Uh, from Blake Barnett of 20 yards and then a touchdown pass and that might have been the highlight of the night. Blake Barnett on the run to a right, a little flick of the arm, dropped it into the bread basket, and Braden Rao bobbled it, corralled it, and took it to the house. 71 yards. Braden has put on 20 pounds of muscle in this offseason. I know he has worked hard. A lot of these Tigers uh, doing work in the weight room in the offseason and uh, that reflects here tonight. So the first ever game here in 4A so far has been a good one for the Tigers. Tigers, they are meeting kind of behind the scoreboard in that uh, north end zone. They are back out onto the field. Is that a little bit different feel, feel as the, these teams not going to the locker room um, here during halftime? Has that little league football feel. And so hopefully they got their orange slices and are good to go. But we're so happy you could join us here tonight. We're going to take one more time out here, and we'll come back. We'll have the kickoff here for the second half here on the Erie Tiger Network. The arm of Erie High School? Well, now you can't. We have set up a Patreon page. There's a way for you to send us a monthly pledge in order to provide funding for the program. It's only going to access the reward tiers. As a Tiger fan, you get the satisfaction of knowing you are helping out your favorite local media organization. As a member of the ETN fan club, you are officially recognized on air and can receive ETN goodies throughout the year. As an in-broadcast red sponsor, you get to sponsor a specific segment of any broadcast. For more information, email bird underscore brandon at sbbsd.org. This is a $25 per month commitment. As an appreciator of Erie's live broadcast with the weekly news, you can help support this program by becoming one of our patrons by going to bit.ly slash ETN Patreon. Go to where your friends are. Go to where the action's at. Go find your sense of adventure. Go Airheads. Airsoft Field and Store located in Erie, Colorado. Go Airheads and Go Tigers.
Front Range Landfill puts all your needs in front of everything else. Front Range Landfill won Erie Chamber of Commerce Business of the Year Award as well as being featured on national television. We are very proud of our facility and we welcome the opportunity to address your disposal needs. Our focus is on customer service. We strive to achieve easy and rapid access in and out of the facility. We feel certain that we will exceed your expectations of your solid waste disposal requirement. Choose Front Range Landfill for all your landfill needs. You will be pleased. And welcome back into the Erie Tiger Network as uh, Erie Tigers will be receiving here in the second half. And I think first thing Coach Cooper might have said is, hey, ball security here on these special team plays. So... Greeley West returning to the sideline here. Not sure what the plan is. You know, you're down, you're looking for a spark. This might be one of those instances where you try an onside kick. They did put a little more time left on the clock. So while we have a moment, Tiger fans, don't forget to uh, set your clocks for next week. And we'll have to double check on the schedule. It says six o'clock at Everly Montgomery against Silver Creek. We'll have to confirm that time, but we'll let you know. We plan on being there out at Longmont High School for the broadcast of that game. Probably be a little bit of a pared down crew to bring that one to you live. Might not have graphics and replay. Uh, you know, we are a little bit limited on how many crew members we can have doing different jobs, uh, depending on venue and all kinds of factors. So uh, we'll just see what that, how that impacts us next week. But we still plan on bringing you the game live next week here on the Erie Tiger Network. And man, what a week this has been. An opening night, first half to remember, but got a second half to play. And so if you're the Tigers, gotta cap it off the right way. By the way, we see that we like when the, uh, even the visiting fans get involved in the chat in a nice way. See some Kearney, Nebraska fans for Greeley West. See Andrew Piper's uncle Frank in Montana, Paisley, Florida, not, so not our only. Uh, we have several Floridians tuned in tonight. Even a shout out to Jamie Nelms and their uh, Tiger alum. So here we go, start of half number two. And it will be the Tigers to receive Mason VV deep. And this one is sent right into the chest of VV. He'll take it near the goal line. VV breaks it through a tackle, still on his feet. Green grass in front of him. Vivi across midfield, and Vivi will take it to the house. We're checking for flags. I don't see any. And a 99-yard return to start this half for Mason Vivi. And if you remember back to the first game last year, Vivi had a huge game. It was somewhere in the ballpark or over 300 yards of all-purpose yards. And, man, he is nearing that total here tonight. The snap, and they're going to stop everything. <laughs> Jaden George picking up, flashing some Heisman moves. And having fun out there is Jaden. But a penalty here, and I'm not sure who this is on. 
too many men for Greeley. And so I'll move it half a yard closer for this extra point attempt. I guess a full yard closer. And another penalty, and this might be on the center. Here's a little hiccup. No, another offside. Hey, if you're Coach Cooper, do you think about going for it from only half a yard out? The Tigers are up 32 points right now. Just to put that into context, if they kick the extra point, that would put them up 33, and a touchdown without Greeley West scoring would be 40 points, and that would start the running clock here in the second half. Ooh, a bouncing snap. The kick is up. And it is good. So a heck of a hold there by Jaden George as that one tumbled to his hands and he was still able to get the hold down in time. <laughs> good job by Jaden. And he's been a real character out there as uh, he's had a lot of fun there as the holder. And now he's on the kickoff team. As Dominic put it through the pipes and now we'll kick this one off. By the way, Erie fans, don't forget to check out. There might be a post-game recap tonight here on the Tiger Times. Go to erietigertimes.com. That is the student journalism website. It has all the stories, a bunch of new stories up on the site over the past couple weeks. Tell you what, these kids in the hybrid learning, they have been flexible. They have dealt with a lot of change and uncertainty, and they have been great. And so the Erie students, and I know students just across Colorado, they have been put through the ringer the last year, and they have responded valiantly as there's a nice return for Greeley West. All the way out into Tiger territory at the 46 is where they will start. I know the schools in Windsor already had students earlier in the year. I'm not sure about the Greeley schools. If they have live in-person learning. We at Erie and in St. Vrain just started in-person learning last week, last Monday, or earlier this week, I should say. It's been a long week. It's felt like two weeks to teachers in the building, that's for sure. First and ten here for Greeley West after the kickoff return from Vivi. Hand off right side and picking his way through a hole. I'm not sure if that is Martinez who has checked into the game again. He was shaken up earlier or if that is. Just in the mass of bodies, couldn't quite tell. That might have actually been Ben Colgate that got that carry. But I am not sure. Five-yard pickup either way. So second and five, Wyrick hands it off left side. Stringing Colgate out are the Tigers and a good defensive play there. Gage Nichols in there on the tackle. And a loss of a yard there by Colgate. Gage Nichols, aggressive, even on the golf course, loves to hit the long ball. And you can see that intensity clearly comes from football. Little scissor action in the backfield and the misdirection counter did not work. And after Colgate picked up five on the first down run, he lost five on the next two. And that'll bring up fourth and 10 here for Greeley West. So they will punt here to Erie. And if Erie scores, I believe that will start the running clock if they score and get the extra point.
punt is away, a little coffin corner punt, and that is placed real well. Bounces inside the 10, and the official's going to spot it. Ooh, I don't know that he gave the most generous spot. I thought that one hopped out at about the 7, and the official will mark it out at the 11. And the Tigers, that's where they will take over. By the way, some area scores being sent into our booth. Tell you what, Grayson Blaylock sending in some scores. Even from Norman, Oklahoma. I guess if your football team is losing, you might as well tune into the Erie Tiger Network. <laughs> uh, he's going to not enjoy that comment. First and ten here for the Tigers. Barnett in the shotgun. We'll read off some of those scores shortly. Barnett will hand it off to Vivi. Left side, big hole. Vivi out across the 20. Vivi down the sidelines. He's got two men who might have an angle. He's across the 30, and he will beat them both. Touchdown, Mason Vivi. 89 yards. And the Tigers are an extra point away from putting this one into running clock. Their first game in 4A, and it's 51 to 12. What a run by Vivi, and this offensive line is mauling people here tonight. So this is to make it a 40 point game and to start the running clock. And it won't start till the kickoff is touched, but 52 to 12. Eighty-nine yard run. So the running clock has been started. Erie fans are clapping for that. And after a long first half, we're going to have a real quick second half. It's going to be about 25 minutes, and we're going to be done with our broadcast here. So what a great opening broadcast here this season for the Tigers. And a great debut night for Blake Barnett as a freshman. Three touchdown passes and a touchdown run and his first carry of his career. Mason Vivi, several huge plays tonight for Vivi. He's got a trio of touchdowns. <laughs> and this one fielded at the four. And a decent return there for Greeley West. That was Schminky with it. And Greeley West will start at the 27. By the way, some scores from around the area. Skyline up 34 to 10 on Silver Creek. That's who Erie will see next week. Windsor beat Greeley Central yesterday 51 to 8. Brighton is up 15 to 3 on Longmont at the half. We will see Brighton. Heritage is an opponent we'll see later. They lost to Loveland yesterday, 49 to 23, and Broomfield beat Monarch 27-20 earlier today. So first and ten, pitch. Oh my goodness, a bone crushing hit again from, I believe that was Andrew Piper again. Oh my goodness. Andrew Piper, a heat seeking missile. Good grief. And it is good to see Piper out on the field. 
Second and 10 now. Handoff right side and kind of just picking his way through some gaps in the defense there with Schminke. And he'll pick up about seven. Third and three now for Greeley Central. Greeley West. I, uh, <laughs> as there's a mix up in the backfield and another loss. So fourth and five and Greeley West, they're gonna go for it here. Tiger defense not ready, so they're gonna call a timeout. So timeout is called, the clock does stop. And we'll stick right here. As senior night tonight for the Tigers. You never know what's gonna happen. Uh, we've already seen some games canceled because of some quarantined high school players. So uh, you just never know. So we just wanted to make sure that uh, senior night was tonight. And that's what the football team decided. By the way, this game is brought to you by Gen Realty. We are broadcasting live from the Gen Realty broadcast booth. Uh, we won't bring up the Patreon graphic because we made a complete mess of it, but Tiger fans, we would love you to partner with us on Patreon. You can sponsor us for as little as a dollar a month. You start getting swag when you hit the $10 a month mark. Uh, but that would be of uh, great help to our broadcast program here at Erie High School, keeping this program alive and kicking through uh, all of the COVID regulations and the shutdowns here in the state. And guess what? On fourth and short, the Tigers commit a penalty, and <laughs> they will award Greeley West with a first down. Handoff right side and the Tiger defense is absolutely stifled the run here in this half. That was Jaramillo and he'll be dropped for a loss of a yard on the play. And now a little rollout pass, a nice little flip there, and that's by far the best pass of the night on the run there for Wyrick. Eighteen yard pass. Now with Javon Aragon on the reception. So first and ten for Greeley West. Spartans, well, full house backfield there. A couple fullbacks. They'll pitch it wide. They do get the seal. Jaramillo's got room. First down yardage and finally corralled out of bounds. That was Benji Havener that kind of forced him out. But there is a flag. It's past the first down marker. I think it's going to be, what, a hold or a chop block or something. And it is on Greeley West, so that will bring him back. But it will be... First and about eight, I believe. So 10 yard penalty, but two yards past the marker. So still a net positive for Greeley West. So first and eight. 3.30 and counting here in this third quarter with the running clock. And good stuff in the hole that time. And coming up to make the play was Jacob Flood, one of the seniors here. And no gain on that play by Jaramillo. Second and eight now for the Spartans. Wyrick 
Check in his quarterback band, three running backs. They're going to pitch it. It's going to be a halfback pass. Tigers didn't read it in time. It was underthrown and dropped. Just a little bit underthrown there by Jaramillo. And one that he wishes he had back, Benji Havner got sucked into the run and realized a little too late that the receiver was breaking past him. But luckily for the Tigers, it was underthrown. Third quarter, Tigers still with the starting defense out there. Third and eight. Wyrick, play action, rolling to the right, stops, throws in a window and a nice catch bouncing off a defender before eventually being corralled and brought down is David Lopez. So a good little pick up there, and Wyrick starting to settle down and throw the ball a little bit better here in this third quarter. 27 yards passing now for Wyrick. He'll hand it off. Little counter action there. Tiger linebackers are just flying up in there and making some big hits tonight. That time, I'm not sure. We actually don't have a 38 on our Erie roster. I do know there was a a change on the roster of a couple players. There's also a nine out there for Erie. We don't have a nine on a roster, and he made a play earlier. Gus Fonseca Walker quickly out there on defense. Tigers stacking the line here. Little inside misdirection reverse give or reverse pivot give kind of and a couple yards on the pickup to the 30 yard line. Brings up third and six for West. reminds me a lot of the offense of the pine creek eagles circa 2004 not the current pine creek eagles that are state champions today Jaramillo thought he was going to throw another halfback pass. Instead, he gets dropped in the backfield. And the clock is stopped for an injury here. As there is a... Greeley West player down. So with 14 seconds left in the quarter, well, we usually like to step aside during a injury. By the way, number nine is Adam Bristow. 38 is Mason Hill. So those are some of the number changes. Thank you to our spotters. Our producer broadcast team helping out. Madison Gambon here. Real complicated job. She's been running graphics and commercials and the entire computer. That will actually, those duties will be uh, kind of split off when we get our new system here in the Generality Broadcast booth. Donna Fuqua has been our spotter. Stacy Boosinger has been our replay operator. Alex Schnegelberger is our camera operator here tonight on the crew. And we still have the Greeley West player down. Greeley West. There's a couple things to clean up, but a team that has had some good years for sure. 4A football. Your Tigers will get Broomfield, and I'll tell you what, that is a game to circle on your calendar, Tiger fans, just because of so many storylines involved in that game. That will be an interesting one to follow, for sure. That was Jaramillo that was shaken up on the play, so he'll come to the sideline under his own power. That's good to see. So they'll start the clock here again. Nine seconds left here in this quarter for what might be the last stoppage of the game. And the little 
fake toss in the pass, and that will end the quarter, and a good pick up there. As that will take us to the end of the third quarter. So at the end of three, it's Erie 52, Greeley West 12. We'll take a timeout here on the Erie Tiger Network. Front Range Landfill puts all your needs in front of everything else. Front Range Landfill won Erie Chamber of Commerce Business of the Year Award as well as being featured on national television. We are very proud of our facility and we welcome the opportunity to address your disposal needs. Our focus is on customer service. We strive to achieve easy and rapid access in and out of the facility. We feel certain that we will exceed your expectations of your solid waste disposal requirements. Choose Front Range Landfill for all your landfill needs. You will be pleased. Are you looking to buy or sell a new home? Jen McGurk, an experienced real estate agent serving Erie, Vista Ridge, and the surrounding Denver area. For years, Jen has assisted all types of buyers and sellers with their real estate needs. Give Jen a call today at 303-949-3331 or check out Jen Realty online at jenrealty.com. And welcome back in, Erie Tiger Network. The whole argument about Aiden's last name. We just call him Big Ox. That's what they say. Just Big Ox. So that might be what we just refer so that we don't screw it up for the rest of the year. <laughs> the stuff there on first down. Tough sledding tonight for Greeley West. Oh. They have had 174 yards on the ground, but only 47 yards through the air. The Tigers, 279 on the ground. That doesn't include their dazzling special teams play. They've had a pick six. As there's a high pitch to Colgate, he's able to snatch it and just thump his way down to the six. Ben Colgate, number eight, taken down by a full ambush of the Tigers. Tigers out on the field right now. I see Logan Gilmore out there. Trying to make out a couple more numbers. Keaton Dennison out there for the Tigers right now. As Wyrick trying to dive toward the corner. He lost the ball, but they'll say he is short of the goal line out at the one. Braden Rowell kind of forced him out over there. Braden Rowell with the touchdown catch. Keaton Dennison pounded the goal line, saying you're not going to get past this on fourth and one from the goal line. They hand it to Colgate. Is he able to punch it in? And no. Keaton Dennison was right. And so the Tigers force a goal line stop. So first and 10 from the shadow of the goal line for Erie. And let's see if they send in kind of the second unit of guys here. And Alex Austin out there at quarterback, the junior. Good to see him out there. Alex will take the snap. He'll keep it himself right side, just trying to kind of weave his way through some traffic, and he picks up a couple is Alex. And 
And a handoff, near side. Busting through some tackles is Caleb Thyssen. And Thyssen from the five all the way up to the 26. A nice 21 yard pickup there for Caleb. Tigers now over 300 yards on the ground. There's a little bit of that X factor that Coach Cooper said we would see here tonight. First and 10, do it again here for the Tigers. Austin will take the snap, hands off right side. And spun to the turf, turf is Trey Kana. Another Kana out there for Erie. And a seven yard pickup there for Trey. I've uh, seen a few Kanas now through the years here. Second and three, Austin takes a snap, play action. He's going to throw the slant and try to hook up with Gage Nichols. Good coverage on the play there. As Gage was looking for his first catch of the night. And Austin's first pass will go incomplete. Tigers 132 yards through the air. Austin getting Kana set correctly. Now he'll take it, runs the read and keeps it himself, lowers his head and gets smashed. But picks up eight does Alex on the run. That was a loud collision. You could hear that all the way up here at the booth. Austin trying to get the formation set correctly. Tigers going a little bit heavier personnel here. Handoff to Kana. And he'll just press it up in there for a pickup of about five. Is Kana. Another shout out and thanks to our sponsors. Our title sponsor, Jen Realty. And then of course, Jeannie Hulse, Go Airheads, Airsoft Field and Store, Germany Law, Jeannie Hulse of State Farm, and Front Range Landfill. And a high snap that Austin was able to get his fingertips on and it knocked down and the Tigers were able to hop on it. Good heads up play there by Alex Austin. You know, Alex has put in a ton of work this off season. And so has Evan Rerick. I know he's been working at 6-0 strength I think the Cowgills are also working there with Matt McChesney and the strength program he has run. A little handoff out along the edge and up the sideline is Kana and he's pelted out of bounds. But a nice pick up there for Trey Kana. So a pickup of 34 yards from Trey Kana. Tigers over 350 yards on the ground now. First and 10 now for the Tigers. 404 remaining here in this game. Running clock. Kana checks with Austin and now he gets the handoff from Austin that time stacked up after a gain of a couple see out there on senior night see Karsten Hansen out there for Erie 
Ay. See, 53. Not sure who that is. That's not on our roster. We got the official roster, but there's some players that are not on there. Gavin Malik on there. He's out there. W Will Johns, a Erie Tiger media student out there for the Tigers. Will Johns had a big kick return out in Canyon City last year. As Alex Austin loses about four yards there. Trying to see who else is out there for Erie. I see Brayton Rao still out there. Let's see. Cole Morgan out there for the Tigers. I see Andrew Evans out there for Erie. As Austin, with two minutes, 30 seconds left, takes the high snap. He'll keep it himself, presses the hole, bounces outside. Austin pointing out blockers, and he takes another big hit. And Austin, a pickup there of about 10 on the play. Call it 11. Heck, they gave him yardage almost to the marker there. Hard to kind of see there along the sidelines. So a pickup of 12 and a first down. I think I see Jacob Riley as one of the players out there right now for Erie. 144 remaining. And even Landon McCarty, I think, is out there. Handoff to... Kana, and he will pick up about three on the play. Minute 18 remaining. And Austin's just going to take it and kneel it. So that is going to do it here. There'll, there'll be one more snap here and one more kneel down. Tiger's just going to take this one and celebrate their first win. And after a great tenure for Coach Cooper at the 3A level, he has started off his coaching career at 4A with a victory, 52 to 12. We'll take one time out after this next play and then we'll come back and wrap things up here. Austin will take the snap and he'll kneel on it. So final score in this one is the time melts off the clock, 52 to 12. Wow, what a debut for the Tigers. And a huge game for Mason Vivi and a huge game for Blake Barnett. And no handshakes here after the game. <laughs> Instead, everyone just holding their helmets and waving towards each other. You know, they've just been tackling and mauling each other for the last hour and a half. Not sure why they can't shake hands, but I do like the little helmets up in the air gesture. So... That'll do it for us. We'll take a quick time out. We'll come back, wrap things up here on the ETN. Are you looking to buy or sell a new home? Jen McGurk, an experienced real estate agent serving Erie, Vista Ridge, and the surrounding Denver area. For years, Jen has assisted all types of buyers and sellers with their real estate needs. Give Jen a call today at 303 949 3331 or check out Jen Realty online at genrealty.com.
have a plan in place for your family's future in the event something happens to you? Are you caring for aging parents, grandparents, or a loved one with special needs? The Germany law firm named 2017 Erie's Chamber Business of the Year provides expert legal guidance and peace of mind for you and your family in the areas of probate, elder law, and estate planning. Visit Germany Law Firm's Erie Village office or website at coelderlaw.net to set up a personalized consultation. And welcome back in, Erie Tiger Network. One more time, the final score, 52 to 12. I say one more time, but I'll probably, who knows, say it two or three more times. Uh, let's go over some final numbers. Blake Barnett, eight passes, four of eight, three touchdowns, 132 yards through the air. He also added another 106 on the ground with a touchdown of his own. Mason Vivi, 140 yards rushing. Thyson with 54. Kana with 51. Alex Austin, uh, if you don't include the kneel downs, he had about 20 yards. Um, Braden Rouse, 71 yards receiving. Andrew Piper, 16 yards receiving. Mason Vivi, 25. Aiden Ox, Ox, Oxiger. Oxiger. Ox, Oxiger. Well, it was in the chat. Oxiger. All right, I think I think we finally got it, Oxiger. So uh, uh, he had the twenty-yard touchdown catch there. Um, Blake Barnett scored the first touchdown of the game for thirty-four yards out. Then a field goal for the Tigers. That was Jaden George. Uh, then a Mason VV screen pass went for twenty-five yards, and the Tigers were up seventeen nothing in the end of the first quarter. A pick six for Andrew Piper. Uh, touchdown pass uh, to Oxiger from Barnett. A touchdown pass to Braden Rao. That ended the first half scoring. And then a couple touchdowns. A kickoff return for Mason Vivi of 99 yards. A 89-yard uh, touchdown run for Mason Vivi. He also had a 90-yard touchdown return called back so Mason Vivi he ran a track meet tonight for these tankers gobbled up all kinds of all-purpose yards uh, we'll have to figure out his total all-purpose yards when we go back and take another deep dive at these stats but you see the Tigers huddling up one more time tonight that'll do it for us in the broadcast booth for Madison Stacy Adana and Alex I'm Brandon. Thank you so much for joining us for our first football broadcast of the year. We'll be back on the air next week out at Montgomery Everly Field in Longmont as the Tigers take on the Silver Creek Raptors. Until next time, Tiger fans, I'll chirp at you later.